Let's talk about hyperbilirubinemia in a newborn. Hyperbilirubinemia is a yellow discoloration of the skin, mucous membranes, and or the sclera caused by increased bilirubin levels. Now, let's break apart this long word. Hyper means high or excessive. Bilirubin means, well, bilirubin. And emia means in the blood. So hyperbilirubinemia is high levels of bilirubin in the blood. First off, let's cover the basics. What even is bilirubin? This is a waste product when red blood cells are destroyed. Basically, it's made when red blood cells break down. A memory trick to help is bilirubin think the breakdown of red blood cells. Now, it's important to know there are normal levels of bilirubin in the blood as red blood cells naturally break down. However, when bilirubin levels get too high, this can lead to jaundice, which is that yellow discoloration of the skin, again, due to high levels of bilirubin. Okay, now that we've covered the basics, let's talk about the two types of jaundice. The first one is pathological jaundice, and the second one is physiological jaundice, also called non-pathological jaundice. Pathological jaundice is abnormal and alarming, where physiological jaundice is typically normal and not alarming. A memory trick to help you remember which one is abnormal and which one is normal is Pathological think pathogen, which is a disease or abnormality. And for physiological jaundice, think the newborn is physically fine. Now, pathological jaundice happens within the first 24 hours of life. So think birth all the way to 24 hours, where physiological jaundice happens after 24 hours of life. Usually we see it around day two or four. It's important to know physiological jaundice is actually very common in newborns. So again, pathological jaundice is alarming and needs quick intervention, where physiological jaundice is not alarming and actually, again, very common in the newborn. All right, let's look at some causes of pathological jaundice. The first one is a hemolytic disease. This happens when the baby's blood type doesn't match the mom's. So the mom's immune system sees the baby's red blood cells as foreign and attacks them. Remember, bilirubin is a waste product when red blood cells are destroyed. Next is premature infants. Premature infants' livers aren't fully developed yet, so they can't effectively process and excrete bilirubin. The next one could be failure to pass meconium. Now, if the baby doesn't pass meconium, which is the first stool, the bilirubin isn't leaving the body. And lastly, sepsis. Infection in a newborn can damage red blood cells or the liver, both which lead to high bilirubin levels. Now let's look at the most common treatment for pathological jaundice. The main treatment is phototherapy. This uses fluorescent blue light to convert bilirubin from fat soluble to a water soluble form. Now, once we have water soluble bilirubin, it can now be processed by the body, which allows the baby to excrete the bilirubin through stool or urine. Let's go over some key NCLEX facts related to phototherapy. The first one is you wanna keep the baby mostly undressed. Only a diaper should be on the baby because this allows for maximum skin exposure to the light. You always want to cover the baby's eyes. Be sure to use eye shields to protect the eyes from the damage or cataracts while under the light. Don't put any lotions or creams on the newborn. These can absorb heat and increase the risk of burns. You always want to be monitoring the newborn's temperature. Because they are under light, we want to make sure they're not overheating. Be sure to only remove the baby for feedings. It's still important the baby's getting the proper nutrition so you can take them out of the light during feedings. And lastly, you want to keep the baby hydrated. Phototherapy increases the risk for dehydration. Why is pathological jaundice so serious? The major concern is kernicterus, which is brain damage caused by buildup of bilirubin in the brain. This is a medical emergency. All right, now let's look at some causes for physiological jaundice. First up is an immature liver. 
In newborns, the liver may not be fully developed yet. This means it can't process bilirubin effectively, so it builds up in the blood and causes jaundice. Next cause is increased red blood cells. Newborns naturally have more red blood cells than adults. Once those red blood cells break down, they leave behind extra bilirubin for the body to deal with. And finally, we have vacuum-assisted birth. This type of delivery can cause bruising or hematomas, especially on the baby's head. That means more red blood cells for the body to break down, which means more bilirubin and a higher risk of jaundice. All right, next is treatment of physiological jaundice. Most of the time, no treatment is needed. It usually resolves on its own as the baby's livers mature and start to function better. All right, let's go over the most commonly tested on. Hyperbilirubinemia is buildup of bilirubin in the blood. There are two types, physiological, which is normal and usually appears after 24 hours and resolves on its own. Pathological jaundice is abnormal, appears within 24 hours, and needs treatment, most commonly phototherapy. And remember, if pathological jaundice is left untreated, it can cause kernicterus, which is brain damage in the newborn. That's all for hyperbilirubinemia. If you want more videos that are not on YouTube, check out Nurse in the Making Plus. This includes access to our growing video library, interactive worksheets that go with each video, and practice questions. You can get access to Nurse in the Making Plus with the Complete Nursing School Bundle. Click the link to the Complete Nursing School Bundle and join thousands of other future nurses using Nurse in the Making Plus. You got this, future nurse.